Hi, today on Metal Rules we're talking to John Mayung from Dream Theatre. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Surviving just about. Um, so I've got a few questions around the, the tour and the album and just life in general, really. Um, so we'll just crack on, really, if that's okay with your good self. Thanks for your time today, by the way. I do appreciate it. Um, oh, sure. No worries at all. So the first question really kind of revolves around how the last two years have been with COVID and how that might have affected the band and um, basically stuff in general, life in general. How's it been for the last two years? <clears throat> well, I mean, it certainly affected everything. Um, but, uh, you know, the way we kind of absorbed the whole thing was we, we tried to like not make it a big negative um and we just you know did our best to uh stay safe and uh and make the best of the downtime that we had um which is the result of our you know the new album maybe from the top of the world sure sure so did it did covid change any of the dynamics within the band at all um not really i mean you know we just you know we're, we're careful about how we went about yeah um traveling and um and we just kind of kept to ourselves really right i'm with you and, well i think um, i think most most people did <laughs> um but you know it it kind of opened up a few doors for me i got a little bit into like product development um yeah uh two years ago we we launched ernie ball music man launched um the signature version of the six string that i'm playing yeah, um, the bongo. We, 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 yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, which I'm, which I'm very pleased with how it came out, um, and of discovering, you know, you know things about it um, that I like about it even more than the original prototypes. Right. And and um, and I also reached out to uh, Ashdown Engineering about doing uh, a signature distortion pedal and. Um, and an amplifier, a bass combo. Um, cool. Yeah, and the yeah, pedal should be coming up. That sounds interesting. A combo rather than a head yeah. and a cab, yeah. Um, well, only because I kind of like the immediacy of having sound. You know, a, a lot yeah, of yeah. my a lot of my gear is, um, you know, just preamps and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to worry about uh you know a cabinet and and a power yeah, there and everything <laughs> yeah but, but absolutely but, but there's but but there's something really cool about a combo where you just you, you plug in and you're, you you're ready to yeah, yeah yeah um but i wanted but i wanted something that i could take on tour with me as well so right. um I'm, I'm really you know impressed with um i really love the sound of the ash i used it on uh a way back on the train of thought album mm -hmm. and and um and as recently on uh the distance over time album um and uh, i'm currently you know experimenting with it um and uh hope to make it even better than, than what it's been for me so right now it's it's still sort of in the experimental stages um but hopefully that, that'll be released soon as well cool and I guess COVID gave you the, the space to do that, which you might not have had otherwise. Right. That's exactly, that's exactly right. You know, if I was busy, I probably wouldn't have. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, had the time to think about these things. No, absolutely. So the album came out last year. I think it was October it came out, A View from the Top of the World. Um, was that recorded during COVID? I presume it was. Was it written during COVID? right it, it was um we had done our dvd shoot in london uh february we we finished in like february of uh just, just before the just before the lockdowns yeah right or, right the, the headlines were yeah, yeah. i i remember being in, in all those you know i remember being in in, in italy and and the headlines were crossing yeah, yeah. about and uh and it was certain you know and then uh we finished the dvd shoot in london 
And then we got home and a week later, the whole world shut down. So it was, it was pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty um, unbelievable, you know? Yeah, well, I think it's been unbelievable for everybody, isn't it, really? Bit of a wake-up call for the whole world. But hey-ho. Um, so you guys have got your own studio now, the DTHQ as well. Does does that give you any kind of uh, additional flexibility? Or did, has it given you kind of scope for trying things out that you might not have tried out before? It, it absolutely does um, because it gives you a bit of, uh breathing room where you're not yeah necessarily thinking about when you have to leave mm -hmm. um so it gives I, I think it's healthy for everyone you know um jimmy t um and maddie maddie's drums guitar tech um who right. basically does everything else for the band um on and off the road um helps keep the ship running yeah um <laughs> Sometimes um, the roadies, you know, roadies do do that. I mean, that's that's they do a lot of stuff in the background that nobody ever sees. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he, you know, I mean, they they basically wired the studio up and mm -hmm. um and brought brought the space to life so that we could do an album there. Right. And and um, you know, I think I think the quality of work is definitely affected. Um. By, by the space and, and sort of um, the setting, you know, I, I, I yeah. enjoy having at home, I enjoy having a little personal space where I have my gear set up to where, um, you know, you, you, you get to experiment and just try different things and you don't necessarily um, have to worry about anything else as long as you have the time. Yeah, sure. Completely understand. So, I guess the next question is, I mean, now, listening to some of the new album, I mean, some of the, uh, and obviously this is, this is Dream Theater personified, some of the time signatures and, and the complexity of the songs is just mind boggling to somebody like me. I mean, how do you go about writing something like The Alien? I mean, the, the time signatures for that are, are crazy, aren't they? <laughs> um, you know, for me, it's all field based and, yep. uh, and I'm not really conscious of this, the time signatures. Um, uh, you know, we kind of, that was like the first song we wrote. Right. Um, it kind of just, it kind of just happened. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it definitely set the pace for the recording. You know, it, you know, it was sort of like a confirmation that we were, you know, all on the same page and, and we were heading in a good direction. Yeah, yeah, I completely understand. I mean, it's a uh, yeah, it's a, just a mind-boggling song. And I was going to ask about the video for it as well. The video for for the aliens almost like a feature film. And I wondered how much input you guys had to that, or whether it's you going to give it to another cut production <clears> company <throat> and they go off and do something and just sort of run it by you. Right. Well, that I mean, for myself, that's more the case. John works yeah. with. Um, uh, Wayne, who does our, our video stuff, and um, and and they work together on uh, bring, bringing the songs to life visually. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't really have a direct uh, involvement with that part of it, with the visual stuff. No, understood, understood. And how was it working with Andy Snape? Um, once again, I didn't really directly work with him. I mean, John. Yeah, produced yeah. the album so he was he was more hands-on with right uh, with john yeah i'm with you yeah i mean i thought andy did an amazing job you know i love yeah. you know the the mixes that came in and um and whenever there was something that you wanted to kind of edit slightly he seemed to really get it right away and yeah um it, it was it was rather um you know it was really constructive and, and it didn't seem like uh it didn't seem like we were like on two different pages he seemed very yeah, on board what 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 it is that we wanted to do yeah yeah that's half the battle well at least you you kind of understand one another there as well so it makes life quite a lot easier and the aliens just won this, this a grammy award which is a massive achievement um what can you tell us about that 
Well, that was something that we were hoping for. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but we didn't know if it was actually going to happen. And, um, so, so that was, you know, uh, that was amazing that, that it did, um, you know, the whole, you know, the whole organization, um, it, it's something that the whole, I, look, I see as, as like a big team. It, it's something that, yeah. um, that, that, uh, we're all really proud of. Oh, no, absolutely. And, and rightly so, you know, it's, it's, it is a massive achievement. It's, yeah, it's really good. And it's great that it's something that, you know, you get recognized for after all these years as well. And it's, yeah, it's just a really good thing. Do you have any favorite tracks from a uh, view from the top of the world or? Favorite tracks. Um, <laughs> the, the, you know what? They're, they're all, they're all my favorite tracks. You know, they all have something to offer. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're doing a couple of them couple of the tracks on um on the view from the top of the world tour um yeah. and um you know they go over really good you know uh and it feels great playing live so um yeah don't have a specific favorite they're all yeah they're all different you know, they, yeah, they are, I know. yeah they're all different <laughs> yeah yeah so the, that european tour which which you were just alluding to is, is looming now not far away at all um it was originally cancelled, obviously, because of COVID. I guess you guys are really looking forward to it. Um, and I presume the the US shows have gone really well, yeah? Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be um, in uh, Newcastle on the, on the 21st of April. Yep. Playing uh, the Utila Arena. And then um, on the 23rd of April, uh, we'll be in London playing Wembley Arena. Yeah, I'll be at that one. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we're really, you know, we're really psyched and, and happy to be um, out in front of people again. Yeah, it must be and, good. Um, and yeah, and the US tour went amazing. Um, it kind of, you know, the, the more and more we played, the more and more people came out. So that was yeah. really a real positive sign. It was good to see. Yeah, because I guess a lot of people are still a little bit nervous. But uh, slowly but surely, things are getting back to normal. Right. Um, let's have a quick look. Okay, so I've had a quick look. I've been I'd, had a quick sneaky peek at the set list that you guys were playing on the American dates. I just wondered if you were likely to be playing the same set list on the European dates, or whether you're mixing it up a little bit. Right, no, it, it will be the same set. Mm -hmm. Cool, it's a good set list. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> right, yeah, no, we we think it's we think so as well. It has a nice flow. Yeah, definitely. So talking about the tour again, um, it's obviously quite a long tour, and taking in quite a lot of lot of countries. I mean, you're moving around Europe quite extensively. Um, how do you guys sort of prepare for something like that? I know you've obviously been together such a long while. This is probably like bread and butter to you, but I'm just curious as to how you kind of get your mindset in the right place for something like a tour like this. Well, that that responsibility really is kind of delegated to um, management and our tour manager. They, they right. figure out uh, the logistics um, for getting us around and... Um, you know, as long as I get a good, you know, six or eight hours sleep a night, you know, I'm good sure. to go the next day. So it's really just to kind of focus on um, all I really have to worry about is <laughs> it's playing, get, <laughs> it, it, it's playing yeah, and, yeah. and getting the bed. And basic, yeah, and basically getting the bed, you know, mm -hmm. and, and getting a good night's rest. Um, and then you wake up wherever you wake up to do yep. it again. So there's no super um, hell raising going on. No. <laughs> no, it's it's all it's all pretty much well thought out. You know, yeah, they yeah. do an amazing job. Yeah, yeah, cool stuff. I mean, there's quite a lot of dates actually, isn't there? So uh, I think you're out on the road for at least a month. So um, right, and, yeah, and, well, and quite a lot of traveling as well between the, the dates. So. Right, yeah, it's actually um, 
I think it's more like six weeks. Yeah, we, yeah. we start um, in Newcastle. I mean, no, no, no. We start in Belfast, North Ireland, mm -hmm. on the twentieth of April, and then um, we we finish in um, Istanbul, Turkey, on the first of June. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a long one. So, when you're traveling, do you do you switch off from music completely, or do you try and write, or do you? What do you do to keep yourself busy? Well, because there's obviously quite a lot of sitting around, really, on coaches and stuff. Um, well, it's actually a, a pretty long day. Everything is geared around the show. Yep. Um, so um, it's really just sort of doing your best to kind of take care of yourself um, then playing the show. Yep. And, um, and for me... I tend to eat late because I can't really stomach food right before a show. So no, I understand. So my ske so so my schedule's thrown a little off. I actually wind up having dinner after a show. Sure, sure. And um, you know, that that's pretty much it. There isn't really much time for anything else. It, it's very <laughs> it's full on, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is very full on. Yeah. Okay. Um... You kind of mentioned the your the bongo signature model earlier on. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that and how that came to be. <clears throat> sure. Um, well, I've been working with Ernie Ball Music Man for about you know over over a decade now, mm -hmm. um, playing different prototypes, and then um, and then we decided to um, make what I was playing available to the public. Um, I felt, you know, it was really something that needed to be, you know, and it kind of filled a void uh, in, in a six string bass world. Mm. And, um, and, you know, we brainstormed creatively, um, you know, and I came up with some really good ideas that yep. made the bass even better. Um, I've sort of simplified the controls to um, two knobs based on my live experience use of what I really needed yep. um, uh, and simplified, you know, the, the, uh, the sound making process, because um, I tend to kind of tweak the sound um, with external gear, you know, yeah. um, on tour, um, you know, have various pieces of equipment um, that, that I feel are, um, you know, make the sound better so oh. it, it's so, so so it's sort of like if, if you try to get one thing to do too many things you don't really wind up with anything so no um, it just makes I, things I, more complicated doesn't it if you're not careful <laughs> yeah so i i pretty much um love the sound of the bongo bass mm -hmm. so what i love about the sound and so that's what i let it to do and that's what i let it do i, I try not to um confuse that issue um but we did some cool things with the fretboard where um yeah i saw that it look, does look pretty <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah yeah the fretboard design is um is like a two-tone neck yeah. comprised of um you know roasted maple mm -hmm. on the high end side and then on the uh, lower frequencies we have um rosewood um and that's um a, a really cool thing that we implemented um utilizing um you know something called the golden ratio which is you know the world world of life phi and fibonacci um but there's but it's a certain um ratio mm -hmm. that that's used in instruments you know uh, instrument makers use it all the time in violins and cellos whatnot because it, it achieves a certain balance yep. um but but the interesting thing that we did was we applied the ratio to the fretboard and how much maple and how much rosewood that would be used. Um, and it came out amazing. And, and I think in a subtle way, it really adds to the sound yep. and the overall feel and performance of the bass It's got a fantastic well. sound. I mean, it really has. Um, yeah, yeah, it's unique. Um, yeah. It, it was it was a cool experiment that worked out. Ooh, good stuff. Are you a bit of a bass collector? I, I can just imagine your house being full of basses. <laughs> um, 
I do have a lot of bases, um, <laughs> but I wouldn't call myself a collector. I mean, I have Go a ahead. bunch of Ernie Ball music band bases. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, but all my other prior stuff that I use, I, I, I kind of, kind of got rid of, you know, I, I don't really like to collect too many things because then I just take up valuable space. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably a healthy way of approaching life. I suspect. <laughs> right. Well, I think I've come to the end of my questions. Um, so we're going to wrap it up here, but all the very best for the tour. And Thank you. Uh, like I say, I will see you in London and thanks for your time today. I do appreciate it because I guess you guys are super busy at the moment getting ready for the tour. Um, right. So thanks. Thanks ever so much, John. Much appreciated. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Uh, no problems at all. Cheers. Bye-bye.